Using the Paragraphs panel in Affinity Publisher, you can arrange text into multi-tiered, bulleted or numbered lists. You can then assign the list formatting to a paragraph text style and then apply that text style elsewhere within your document to quickly replicate the list formatting. For example, I have here a financial document that I've been working on and I want to turn part of this yearly overview into a bulleted list. I'll start by selecting the text frame tool from my tools panel and selecting the text I want to make into a list. To arrange this text into a simple bullet point list, I could use the preset bulleted list option found on the context toolbar. Selecting this option will create a bullet point at the start of each paragraph. Instead of using one of the preset list options, I could instead create a list using the options found on the paragraph panel. In doing so, I'll have access to more options, giving me a greater level of control over the list formatting. So I'll navigate to the paragraph panel and scroll down to the bullets and numbering section. I'll then select an option from the type dropdown. The type dropdown menu contains options for lists that utilize bullet points, numbers, Roman numerals, and letters. For this example, I'll select the bullet option. This will arrange my text into a bullet pointed list similar to the preset option. However, in this document, I want my bullet points to be indented and aligned with the first line of text. To create this indent, I'll need to increase both the left indent and the first line indent spacing. I'll increase the left indent spacing to 6.3 millimeters to match the default tab spacing. And I'll also change the first line indent spacing to three millimeters. With my indent set, I can now choose to change the bullet point shape. I can do this by either selecting a custom glyph from the glyph browser or by selecting the bullet point in the text field and replacing it with one of the preset options. I'll select a square bullet instead of the default round one. Lastly, I can change the color of the bullet by creating and applying a character style. Character styles are a selection of predefined formatting options, such as the text color and the point size. So I'll make sure that I have the bulleted list selected and then navigate down to the style dropdown found in the bullets and numbering section. And I'll then create a new character style by selecting new. I'll call this character style 01 bullet. Then I'll go down to the color and decorations tab and I'll select the text fill option. Using the color picker, I'll sample the pink color from the document. And then I'll assign the color to the text fill by single clicking the color well. With my formatting in place, I'll click OK to create the character text style. The character style will automatically be applied to the selected list and we can see that the bullet points in our list have been changed from black to pink. In this first example, the bullet point list only uses a single tier or level. If I scroll to the page below, we can see that I have this text here and I want to separate this text into a multi-tiered list. I'll start by selecting the first three paragraphs and I'll go to the bullets and numbering section again within the paragraph panel and under the type dropdown, I'll choose the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 option. Notice that the level is currently set to 1. This formatting will be for the first level of my list. Before altering the spacing, I'll reduce the tab stop spacing from 6.3 to 5 millimeters. I'll then adjust the left indent spacing, increasing it to 5 millimeters, keeping the first line indent spacing at 0 millimeters. This will ensure that my list remains slightly indented. Scrolling back to the bullets and numbering section, I'll go to the style dropdown and choose to create a new character style, this time for my numbered lists. I'll call the style 02 number style. Then I'll go to the font tab and I'll change the weight from no change to semi bold. I'll also go to the color and decorations tab and again set the color to pink. I'll then click OK to assign the character style to the numbered list. So essentially, we've created our numbered list level 1, but now I want to set the second paragraph to level 2. I can do this in one of two ways, by either selecting the text and changing the level on the paragraph panel under the bullets and numbering section from 1 to 2, or by carefully inserting my cursor in between the number and the first character and pressing the tab key.
If I press the tab key once more, it will change from level 2 to level 3. Alternatively, if I hold shift and then press the tab key, it will decrease the indentation and level. Additionally, I also want the level 2 to have an increased indent from our level 1 list. So I'll go ahead and increase the level 2 spacing, creating a 5mm indentation between each bullet. I'll then do the same to the paragraph below, adding it to this multi tiered numbered list. I'll once again position my cursor between the bullet and the first character and press tab twice, assigning the paragraph list level to 3. With the basic levels starting to take shape, I can now begin to use the text input field to create custom number references. I can change the text input field to include information from the previous list level. For instance, with my level 2 text selected, I'll change the number type from 1, 2, 3, 4 to 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. Then in the text input section, I'll choose to include level 1's number in the field. So I'll position my cursor in the text input field before the level 2 number. I'll then select the drop down and choose level 1. I'll then add in a decimal point between the two numbers. Now my overarching level 1 number will be included in the level 2 reference. I'll repeat the process, changing the level 3 type from numbers to letters. I'll then insert the level 1 and level 2 reference before the level 3 reference within the text field, inserting decimal points between each of the level's references. And there we go, we've managed to create some custom list references. Currently, I've made adjustments to the list spacing using the options on the paragraph panel. However, I could instead choose to use the text frame ruler. I'll position my cursor on the level 3 section of this multi tiered list. I'll then go to the context toolbar and I'll select the text frame ruler. This will bring up the text frame ruler and it will hover above my active text frame. The ruler will allow me to make adjustments to the left indent, the first line indent, and the last line outdent. So I'll take the opportunity to increase the left line indent and the first line indent. Finally, I'll make a small adjustment to the last line outdent. Great, I now have a formatted multi tiered list that uses three clear levels. And I could continue manually assigning list levels to the list as I'm working through the document. However, a more efficient way of working would be to assign the list formatting to a paragraph textile and then simply apply the textiles throughout the document. So I'll select the level 1 text from the multi tiered list, then go to my textiles panel and choose to create a new paragraph textile. I'll call this new textile 04 numbered lists level 1. As the level 1 text was already selected when applying a new textile, it will automatically carry over the level 1 formatting that we applied earlier. As a result, I don't need to make any adjustments at the moment to the paragraph style. I'll click OK to create the style. I'll then repeat the process twice more, selecting the level 2 text and choosing to create a new paragraph style. I'll then name the paragraph style 05 numbered lists level 2 and once again click OK. And finally, I'll create my last paragraph textile and I'll call this one 06 numbered lists level 3. OK, with my styles created, I can now quickly go through and apply these paragraph textiles elsewhere within my document. I'll go to the section below and I'll apply the textile 04 numbered lists level 1. In the section below, I'll go ahead and select several paragraphs and change them all to paragraph style level 2. Finally, I'll select the rest of my text in this text frame and set it to level 3. In addition to the numbered lists, I could also use formatting such as initial words to highlight the level 1 text. And in this particular document, the first section of each list will always be a question, so I want to highlight these questions. Normally, I would choose to use the max word count to limit the initial words formatting. However, in this example, I want to make sure that I include the question in its entirety. So instead, I'll increase the word count to something large, like 30 or 40, and then I'll make sure in the text input box that the end character also includes question marks. 
Finally, I'll then create another character text style, making the initial words a different color and bold. I'll call this one 07 initial words, and then under the font tab, set the font weight to bold. I'll go to the color tab and assign a dark blue color. I'll then click OK to create the style and apply the character at the same time to my initial words. As we can see, this will then affect the first line of the paragraph, ending only after the first question mark. I could then choose to update the level 1 paragraph style to include the initial words formatting. So with my text selected, I'll navigate to the text style panel, right click over the level 1 style, and choose update. This will update the level 1 style, applying the initial words elsewhere within my document. So that was how to create multi-tiered lists using bullets and numbering whilst applying additional formatting through initial words, character and paragraph textiles in Affinity Publisher. I hope you found this interesting and thank you for watching.